Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, if you can see by the title, you see what I post all the time. All it takes is one move from God, just one. So the reason why it's important that I um, get on and share this special message with you guys is because there's something about what's going on for many of us in this particular season. There are things that need to happen, but it literally only takes one move from God. Now, I talked about this on a video prior, and I will put the link in the description so that you can look at that in its entirety. But essentially, I was just explaining how oftentimes when we get one move from God, it's because there were a series of little moves that we positioned ourselves for before that big move happened. I know a lot of times when God shows up, it's like, boom, oh my God, wow, that's amazing. You know, look at God. We have these great experiences, right? But sometimes, y'all, in the process, as God is building us up to give us that one move, it's a season of putting feet to your prayers. So when God gives us the unction to do little small things, Usually those little small things lead up to big things. How many of you right now are in a season where things seem to be, in some cases, it seems like God is giving you instruction and it seems insignificant? Does it seem like you may be led to do something that seems like, why do you want me to do this, God, but then you do it? Or are you someone who's had to make some major God moves and you look crazy to other people? I can personally tell you the attacks from that are insane. It is very hard to even defend yourself because you have to stand in a posture of God has to be a defender of those who refuse to defend themselves because that's when he does his best work, when he's protecting us and he's making sure that we are covered because we are obedient you know, to what he calls us to do. And even yesterday, a friend of mine sent me a message and it was so good because the pastor was basically saying, it's one thing for all hell to break loose when you're disobedient. But what happens when all hell breaks loose and it's because you're being obedient? That's a completely different conversation, right? So with that being said, you know, all it takes is one move from God, just one. So I want you to sit with that for a second. And I want you to make sure that whatever you are posturing yourself for and you are expecting God to do, make sure that you are in position for your one move. Now, the interesting thing about life, y'all, is that you and I both know that there are things that happen sometimes that are just completely beyond our control. Not only are they beyond our control, but they begin to affect us in a way where if we are not careful, we could be so caught up in really obsessing about God hearing us and moving the way we want him to move that we could really miss the subtle ways that he's moving. Um. So I wanted to give you that little precursor before I got into the actual message that I wanted to give, but just take those things into account. And like I said, listen to the video. It's only a, it's a short, it's a minute that I talked about all it takes is one move from God. And then just how it'll take, sometimes it'll take other things to build up to that. So with that being said, I want, I want you to understand this. Everything that we go through in these different seasons, even if it feels like the season will never end, even if it feels like, oh my God, I can't take it anymore. The pressure is unbearable. Everything has a death date, whether we like it or not. Everything has to expire at some point. So I want you to be very, very careful about expecting Things to last for an extended period of time and you fall into a, a place of sadness or depression or even high functioning anxiety or any of these things that the enemy can try to slip in because you don't see God moving. You don't, you don't see him moving the way you think you should see him moving. I need somebody to catch that because what's happening is there are people who are losing their faith and they're not believing because God is not manifesting himself the way they thought that he would. He's not showing up in the way that they think he should to give them the answer that they desire. But the thing that we have to understand is 
God is not limited to our small minds and our small beliefs. He is expansive. He can do anything. He is greater than our thoughts. He is greater than our minds. So we have to make sure that as he opens up these doors in the coming days, weeks, and months, that that one move that we've been waiting for is going to actually be multiple moves. It's not just going to be that one big thing. Because listen, all it does take is one. And if I'm fully transparent, that person that I'm talking about, sometimes that's me. You know, even though I might be wired to inspire, the truth of the matter is nobody is always on. Nobody. And even though we can trust and believe God for things to happen in the way we want them to happen, in the way we hope they can happen, we just have to trust that that move that needs to be made from him, he's going to do it. We also need to be encouraged in spite of feeling like, we don't see any traction. You have to remember analogies like um, planting seeds. You don't actually see the seed growing and doing what it needs to do in the soil, but it's, it's doing what it, it needs to do because it's in the proper position and it's in the proper place. And a lot of times, y'all, we see things at the ending point or we see what somebody else is living in and we don't know what they had to, what they had to go through to get there. We don't know what that one move is. And see, for everybody is different. I know in my case, my thing wasn't necessarily a person, a place, or a thing. It was a mind shift. Some of you are just waiting on a mind shift. And that is one of the prophetic words I wanted to mention on this with you guys right now because some of you are having mind issues. It's not about having the capability or the talent or the understanding. It is coming into a place of really elevating and getting getting that entire framework from God, that blueprint, that's it. Thank you, Lord. That blueprint from God that can be very specific and very, very uh, particular to what you're going through and what he's called you to. That is very important. And for some of you, that's your one move. And you can say, well, okay, well, once he does a mind shift, what? Well, listen, I can tell you something. If that's yours, because for many people, it could be different things. But if that's yours, trust me, you had to do a whole bunch of stuff before you got there. Okay, it could have been a whole bunch of heartbreaks, a whole bunch of things backfiring. It could have been a whole bunch of stuff that you may have written down and seen that you may, uh, excuse me, things that you have written down on your paper for years and the goals never came to pass. Things that you have said and that you said you believed about yourself, but you don't see the full manifestation of it. It's in those spaces right there where those little moves are being made. And then one day you're like, oh, enough is enough. That's a wrap. And then boom, you get that clarity on, you know what? I got to get some mind shifts. Mind, excuse me, some mind shift changes. I have to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. That's Romans 12, 2. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And basically what that is, is everything that you're thinking from worldly perspective, everything that's not kingdom perspective, everything that has you thinking like really, really small minded, it it has to be erased. It has to be replaced with what needs to go there, which is kingdom thinking. And I'm going to tell you this, there are going to be people for some of you, again, this is a word. Some of you have people in your life who are great people. They could be successful people. They could be wealthy people, but they're not kingdom minded. They're just successful, good people, but they're not people who understand giving. They don't understand. Uh, it's not about the selfish, about selfishly putting your things out there. It's about putting yourself out there in a way where you're genuinely giving God the glory. And it's not so much people focus, but it's God focused. And as a, as a result of it being God focused, then it brings you to the people. Because what happens is if you are going through the guise of, okay, well, this person is successful, so I should learn from them. You have to be careful even in those spaces, because if some of you have been called to kingdom wealth, that is not going to look like wealth to a regular person. A person who is in the world, they might talk about making another two, $3 million, but 
the way God may be telling you that you're going to get the two or three million dollars, it's nothing like that. And if you tell them, they're going to say you're stupid. You don't have a plan. You wishing, you hoping you're not going to get it. You're not, you don't have your stuff together. And that's completely the opposite of what God told you. And that's because that's their faith. And then what happens is when you connect your faith to their faith, it now reduces your faith because now you are reduced to hard work when God has already graduated you from hard work to smart work. And then when you go from hard work to smart work, then you go to kingdom evidence. You get to see the evidence of that smart work because the smart the smart work is essentially you being able to understand no you do have to work again proverbs said you know if you don't work you don't eat it is what it is right so in whatever capacity that is though that might be a nine to five for somebody that might be other things it, it is it's not specific but basically you have to put effort into something somebody like myself i have been using I have been doing so many things and using so many mediums and platforms for well over a decade. So when people see certain things happening for me now, it's not like I did it overnight. And even even then, it's still slow. It's still trickling and taking its time to, to manifest and do what it needs to do. But it's not something that happened overnight. You know, and again, I try to not speak on myself so much, but it's important, y'all. That if you come to this page and you want you want inspiration, I need to tell you the truth. I don't want you to think I'm on 10 all the time. So in this particular word, I mentioned myself a couple of times. That's not something that I'm trying to make a habit, but I think it's really important for some of you who still in this new year, you know, when it's going to be in the second week of the new year, you could already be feeling, feeling the pressure. You could already be feeling away. And so it's just important for you to know that you're not by yourself. It's important for you to understand that, you know, whatever it is that God is telling you to do in this hour, in this season, you still have to make sure that you make it your business to get it done. You have to make sure that you do it because truly there's nothing good that's going to come from you being disobedient or getting frustrated because God didn't do this magical one move for you. You need to make sure that you continuously show God in the way that he's leading you. Hey, I hear you. I'm listening. And he's going to tell you. What he tell you, he might not tell me. See, here, let me me tell you. I'm going to give you all a little pro tip, okay? It's certain things in the word. Well, put it like this. Not certain things. The things that are in the word of God, we all have access to that, right? Okay. But he also is going to give you specific details for your story, for your path, for your journey. And you can still pull from those words. You can still, you know, you you get you can get your information and the meat and potatoes from there. But when you get the sprinkles and the extra sauce, the sauce, you got your own sauce. He's going to give you that according to your portion. And if you, again, like I said, there's some of you, you think it's a great connection, it's a powerful connection, but if it's not, If a couple of things, if a person makes you feel bad for your faith, you don't need to keep those people close. I don't care how successful they are. You don't need to be around them. Number two, you definitely cannot be around dream killers. You can't do that. And thirdly, you have to watch your mouth because you can't share your vision with everybody. You can't do it. You just can't do it. And, you know, like I said earlier, You cannot be afraid to do the little tiny, small things that God may tell you to do, the little small details he may give you to partake in, even though it seems foolish and it seems insignificant. So yes, all it takes is one move from God, and it truly does just take one. It also is imperative that you understand that he's going to always move for you when he knows that you need it, but he's also so incredible that You have been given a skill set. You have been given an arsenal to navigate through this life while you're a human and on this realm to get things done and to get things popping. You may be in a very tough, cringy season. Some of you may be in an absolutely fabulous, incredible season. Whatever season you're in, God could still move and turn your life around just the way you need him to do it. So, I hope this word bless somebody. Drop your information in the comments for me. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know um, how's the new year going for you so far. And if there's a one move from God that has changed you, that has inspired you, that has kept you going and you want to share it, 
You can email it to me. I would love for you to send it to me. And I'm going to drop my email in the comments and I will feature you on my podcast. So let's get that going. And guys, make sure you check all of my links in the description. I have books. I have a uh, um, coaching and I have some classes coming up and some courses. I'm really excited about the things that are coming through and just a lot of cool things that are happening. So I want you guys to stay connected. Make sure you subscribe and please share y'all. Don't, you know, don't be stingy y'all. Go ahead and share the word y'all. Let people know what's up. Come on now. Let them know. But, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys. And look, I was about to stop, but let me just say this too, before I go. Uh, okay. There's someone on here, you just recently found something out. I feel like you found it out over the weekend. Um, and it's you have this you have this pressing thing on you that's like, God, this cannot be true. I can't believe that they have done this, or people are telling you something about somebody, you don't believe it. The Holy Spirit is wanting me to tell you mistaken identity. That is your word for that. It's mistaken identity. So whoever this is that is getting blamed for something, they were. It, it's almost like the enemy is framing them. It might not be high tech framing like we see on a movie or something, a spy movie, but this person is being framed in a sense, and and I and you would be able to understand what that means. But I hear mistaken identity. So this person is being falsely accused of something, and then your gut, your gut keeps telling you it's not true. Your gut is correct. So make sure that you seek the Lord's face on what that, that means for you and don't make any rash decisions or say anything. Just sit with this and please let him talk to you directly on it. But I wanted to be obedient because I was wrapping up. So that's that. Um, and that's it. Love you guys. Make sure you keep in touch and check my community page. I make inspirational posts every single day. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too.